It sounds like a cliche, but uh, people go into politics to try and make change and positive change in people's lives. And I think this uh, Dublin uh, North Inner City Development Authority Bill, which we moved the first stage earlier in the summer and spoke about on the plinth then, is one such opportunity uh, for politicians. It's pretty simple. Uh, the bill sets out the functions of the authority. Uh, the background to it was, as we know, the gangland feud that erupted around uh, 2016, uh, former Tisha. And again, he took a big interest in it, established uh, the Mulvey uh, Commission, which produced the Mulvey Report. But our concern, and the whole purpose of the bill really simply is this, is to put the recommendations of that bill on a statutory basis so that implementation of Mulvey isn't dependent on the whims of politicians who are or are not interested to a certain degree or not, and to ensure that for a period of a decade, for a period of 10 years, uh, that it's put on a statutory fund, uh, footing to drive home uh, the, uh, the proposals and the objectives uh, contained in Mulvey and some issues outside of that. And we'd like to think that as a party uh, we have a very positive track record in relation to putting bodies like this on a statutory basis, whether it was the IFSC, Temple Bar, Grange Gorman would be a perfect example of taking a derelict site, uh, setting up a statutory body and driving home incredibly positive and innovative change that has uh, made and will continue to make um, significant changes in the lives of people. So that's really the background to the bill and we we'll take any questions you have as well. You mentioned that Kenny did take quite an interest in the Do you think I? Do you think that's stalled under the current issue? I think there's, every so often, there's a, a kind of a, an input from, from government uh, that's welcome, whether it's in terms of funding, um, but it's precisely that. There isn't a statutory basis to this that ensures that regardless of who's in power, uh, regardless uh, of what government or whatever view, um, that there is uh, a statutory agency with specific powers and specific functions um, and budgets uh, dependent on the input of the Minister for Finance that ensures that the objectives of that um, are, are delivered home. And there's one thing, and Mary can talk about this too, I mean, unlike other areas, and I would have uh, areas in, in my own constituency and there'd be places like North Clendalk and we would hope that this would be a blueprint that could be followed in specific areas. But there's a uniqueness about Dublin North Inner City. Uh, there's a sense of ownership of the entire country about Dublin North Inner City. It's hardly a person in Ireland who hasn't been down there, whether it's through sporting connection or, or other connections. So there's a sense of kind of national ownership of Dublin North Inner City that makes it, makes it unique. I think if you talk to the task, to the people living in the North Inner City or the people working in the North Inner City, I think what they would say is they really appreciate the work of the Taoiseach's task force to date, but that there's no long-term commitment to it. It's not there on a long-term basis. The funding comes from time to time, and so the initiatives can only be really at a fairly superficial level. And while everybody appreciates the interest and the focus, what they'd really like to see are initiatives and programmes that will take a long-term and strategic approach to the redevelopment and regeneration of the North Inner City. Because as John said, when people arrive into Dublin, if they're coming from the airport or they're coming up from the country, they go to Crow Park, they go to the Convention Centre, um, O'Connell Street, the GPO, I mean, we, we all know it, but, but, but the impression they get often is of dereliction and homelessness. Um, and for people living there, that's not good enough. For people trying to run businesses there, that's not good enough. And what the North Inner City Community Coalition, and, and they are supportive of this bill, um, uh, they want to see a, a long-term commitment similar to what was made to the regeneration of Grange Gorman, the Docklands and Temple Bar. What kind of powers and initiatives will you be talking about? I mean, what can an agency do that has not already been done that could not be done? Uh, it's set out in, in the functions uh, of the authority. Obviously it has to have regard to the work of the existing agencies, the Dublin City Council, Enterprise Ireland and so on. Um, but it would be an authority uh, made up of uh, a board um, who can set up, again it's set out in the bill, set the strategy, taking into account, I mean, uh, Mulvey was pretty specific about three or four different areas that he wanted to see uh, significant change taken, whether it was education, refurbishment, renewal, uh, providing proper strategies around uh, social protection and inputs in relation to all the Garda and justice related areas. Now, you need, in our mind, 
one agency to drive that forward who wake up every morning and that's their only focus and their sole focus. You know, City Council has other focuses, Enterprise Ireland has other focuses, so that you'd have a statutory agency whose sole ambition and whose sole focus is on driving the objectives of Mer uh, the Mulvey Home. Are you know about O'Connell Street as well, sorry, just... No, it wouldn't be another Quango. Uh, I mean, it, that is one way of looking at it, but, but it wouldn't be. Uh, if you look at places like O'Connell Street, a third of the street is derelict, more or less, or unoccupied, or certainly in unproductive use. The National Monument site on Moore Street, you look at Parnell Square, the Cloche de Wira site, Dorset Street, Mary's Place. I mean, all throughout the north inner city, you can see that there are uh, sites which are in state ownership that have masses and masses of potential for regeneration, not just for that local area, but for the capital city and for the country as a whole. So what we're saying is, is that the city council is, is there the, and, you know, all of the other authorities are there, but none of them wake up every morning and say, we're going to drive the north inner city and we're actually going to drive the regeneration there. And, and one of the important differences of the north inner city, a population of over 70,000 people, but very low home ownership. So with low home ownership, you don't get like, you haven't got a residential community that, that own the area, have an investment in the area. But the other thing is, is that you have all of this public domain, which is highly visible for not just people living there, but for everybody coming in and out of the place. So we need to invest in that. We need the state to take a lead so that private investors then will also invest. And that's one of the things that the authority would have a remit with. And specifically in relation to me, Hall's question about Quango. Um, and this is why I mentioned at the start, you know, Fianna Fáil's track record in relation to the IFSC, in relation to Temple Bar, and the most recent one is in relation to uh, Grange Gorman. Um, you could have described them at the outset as potential quangles, but they have delivered in spades for the city and will continue to use on. So that's what we would like to see the Dublin North Inner City Authority. Well, there's a significant amount of private business now in those areas. You Absolutely. Talk about Google, Facebook, Facebook well, City Bank, and all of that. Big yeah. tracts of land. Yeah integrating it you know with universities and like we've seen the government launch should they be investing in those communities as well in the united states i think in some cities they are they give a portion of their profits and that goes into driving uh, progress in those communities that's a that is a message that has come up constantly from the communities there that they live within not even a hundred <laughs> yards 50 feet in some cases of you know city bank as you said you've google facebook all of those there has to be some kind of corporate responsibility brought into play here, and I think that's a, a, a significant role that could be played by such a, a statutory We're having authority. a two-tier uh, development now taking mm -hmm. place. That's one of the problems as well. There is this two-tier development taking place, and a certain ghettoisation as a consequence of that, because the state does need to step up to the plate. Fundamentally, look, we're talking about our capital city. At the end of the day, we're three dubs here, members of, of the Fianna Fáil party have grown up in Dublin. We know what needs to be done in the inner city to, to regenerate it and to rejuvenate it because a lot of strides have been made over the years. There's no question, and I've continually highlighted with my colleagues, with Mary and John and others, the, the potential of state-owned land right across the country, not just here in Dublin. Um, but it takes too long. And our, our, our criticism, and I think a very valid one of governments over the last number of years, has been announcement, 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 no delivery. Okay, this provides a mechanism for actually delivery on the ground, and, and that, that's what we want to see. Have you consulted with the Port Authority on this? Because are you taking in part of the Port there with the North Docks and... The Port Authority owns their own land, and so you're right, it is actually, it goes all the way down to East Wall. It's one of the differences actually between the current task force, and it's an important difference and distinction. The current task force deals with a very small pocket of the uh, northeast inner city, just from O'Connell Street as far as um, Seville Place and down Sheriff Street, Sean McDermott Street. This will actually take in uh, the northeast uh, all the way to East Wall and the North Wall, and back to the west as far as Infirmary Road and uh, Stony Batter. So the Port Authority have a copy of this, absolutely. Uh, I mean, this has been published now since June. Um, we held a public meeting. The Lord Mayor of Dublin hosted that in the Mansion House, and it's been widely circulated, and it is supported by uh, the uh, communities of the North Inner City, including, sorry, the North Inner City Community Coalition. The, so, yeah, and the Port, just to add on to what Mary's saying, I mean, that's a valid point. Um, the Port is one of those agencies <coughs> that's cited in the, uh, in the, in the bill. Um, and having met <coughs> with the chief executive of, of Dublin Port, and I think Dara's probably met with them too over the last few years, Dublin Port is really anxious um, you know, to remind people that it's part of Dublin. It's taken a number of initiatives in the last number of years to try and open itself up 